Mr. Yan Vishbarka, thank you so much for taking the time for this interview. And first, we'd like to know how you view e-health and how is the chain of hope or circle of hope for people? Well, circle of hope or chain of hope, uh, it was a reaction to a vicious circle of failing applications in e-health that was mentioned in a previous, uh, in a previous uh, presentation. But actually, what e-health is, it is a way to support healthcare with information technologies mm -hmm. and uh, to support quality of care and mm. to support accessibility of care and also to support the cost containment of healthcare mm. that is uh, so important uh, in uh, all parts of the world. Mm. So based on your experience, what's the reception of medical uh, uh, practitioners, uh, physicians to e-health? Do they accept it? Are they willing to work with it? Based on your experience in uh, the Czech Republic? Well, actually there is some hesitation in the medical community. That's, uh, there's no discussion about that. But uh, again, if you realize that uh, it is a tra tradition of medicine to find the ways to provide the best care you can mm -hmm. giving, g given, the, given the limited amount of money that you can spend for that care, then it's quite clear that the, that the medical community will realize that uh, e-health is a help uh, to all of them, mm -hmm. that e-health is a way to empower both the patients and the, medi and the medical part of the, uh, of the health problems. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you mentioned that information is a kind of a weak link when we speak about e-health. So what did you mean by that? Can you elaborate? Well, it's information models that uh, sometimes uh, that still do not uh, uh, reflect uh, properly some aspects of, uh, uh, of uh, health care. And uh, it's quite, uh, quite difficult uh, to develop an information model of uh, uh, health care if you, again, if you realize that, for instance, World Bank uh, is uh, still aiming at the, at the economic model of healthcare, so mm -hmm. it's somehow interconnected, because health is uh, something very subjective, mm -hmm. also given the definition of World Health uh, Organization, that health is a state of well-being, mm -hmm. not just absence of a disease, which is, very, it, which is a very subjective definition. Mm -hmm. and if you try to put it in some objective terms, mm -hmm. as uh, information, as... Uh, as uh, data and also as uh, financing that, then it uh, brings uh, it brings problems. Mm -hmm. So in the next segment of the interview, we'd like to know more about the assisted living uh, project. What is this project? What does it offer to patients? Well, actually, again, it's a way to contain costs of care and it's a way to uh, to improve the quality of care. It's known that uh, the best for the patient in terms of both quality and uh, costs of care is to keep the patient in his home environment mm. as long as you can because that's uh, where the patient feels the best the patient feels the best and uh, that's uh, where the care is uh, uh, is the cheapest because you don't have to pay the hotel costs so, so to say mm. uh, of the hospital so assisted living in a way is a concept that brings this into reality mm. you concentrate at the specific uh, weaknesses that are uh, that are given by the health status of the uh, of the person of the patient, mm. and you try to help using ICT. So uh, you can imagine, or th there are projects uh, on uh, uh, helping the patients uh, recover after operations, getting them early uh, early home, and monitoring them mm. in their home environment, giving them advice to uh, see their doctors for check up uh, at. Uh, times that are needed for the checkup and not at times that were, that were preset mm. uh, sometimes earlier so it's a way to personalize it's a way to personalize the care and it's a way to yeah it's a way to make the make the living as easy and uh, as uh, i would say as pleasant for them as possible mm. Mm. as a similar project is a way is a project to assist uh, visually impaired people in their in their hometowns for instance mm -hmm. and it's a natural idea to combine some GPS uh, monitoring system and uh, GSM uh, messaging uh, mm. to ask for help uh, for these people in case uh, they, I don't know, they, they lose their way or they come to a difficult situation so that they can be advised what to, what to do, where to go, or someone can be sent to help them directly. Mm. And again, it's really, it's really a simple idea, but uh, it takes some it takes some effort to develop it in a successful project that combines GSM, mm. GPS, 
uh, help desk, digital maps. Yeah, it's it's a challenge to mm -hmm. develop this kind of application. Okay, uh, telemedicine is a very interesting concept, and for those who don't know it, can you please tell us more about it and what can it offer to patients as well? Uh, well, yes, telemedicine is a very broad uh, is a very broad area. So, I would rather concentrate on some specific projects to give uh, sure. to give examples. So, one of them that uh, uh, that deals with the area of medical education is a federation of medical faculties that share educational content. Mm. It's, uh, yeah, it's again uh, making the textbooks and making the atlases better available to students and at the same time to control, uh, to control the content. This is a project uh, that is based, uh, uh, based in Brno, mm -hmm. in uh, the Czech Republic. It's run by one of the universities there and the network now is uh, covering all the Czech Republic and Slovakia. Okay. And it's not just medical faculties, but it's also but it's also other educational institutions that are joining that project. It's an open source project, so I can mm -hmm. easily imagine this project being this being spread to further geographic areas, for instance. Uh, uh, yeah, geographic areas that are interconnected with a common or with a with a related language as, uh, yeah, as Arabia. For so, mentioning open source, uh, we'd like to know how open source can contribute to e-health uh, and linking it to the concept of peer review. So, can you highlight on that, please? Well, yeah, I will use uh, another project uh, in telemedicine to, to uh, demonstrate this. Because, uh, yeah, it's an iPath. It's a, it's a framework to mediate uh, case-based uh, consultations or case-based uh, assistance mm -hmm. uh, to health professionals in rural or remote areas. An example for that is Central or Sub-Saharan Africa mm -hmm. where the pathologists uh, that are quite uh, quite rare there mm -hmm. or the technicians that process the pathology slides, they can send their data for, uh, for assessment, uh, for evaluation to the top uh, experts uh, around the world and it works this kind of this kind of concept. So it is a it is an open source project, mm -hmm. uh, which means that uh, the that on, yeah on one hand, it is open to what uh, in medicine is known as peer review. Mm -hmm. It is open to uh, criticism. It is open to improvements from peers, from people that would be uh, that would be using it. It uh, avoids duplication of efforts, of course, and uh, it also allows to create specific modules for mm. that kind of a system to represent the local needs, to mm. address directly the local needs. So if there is a, uh, if uh, you need the system to support you in some activity mm -hmm. and you feel that uh, the system would need some modification or some, uh, some further development, you can do it yourself which mm. is what the, what the open source guys uh, call scratch your own itching. Okay. So yeah, it's a, it has its, a, I would say, ideological connotations in medicine, and that's the peer review, uh, the peer review concept. Mm -hmm. And it also has its uh, technical, its technical aspects, its technical advantages that are, that are well known uh, in the open source world. No, oh, okay. Thank you so much for your insights, and we wish you the best of luck. Thanks. Oh, a lot. Right, thank you. Thank you.